This month we have Star 64 availability, Pine Tab 2 availability, and Pine Note developments. Oh, and I think the Risk 5 Pine Tab has been announced and might launch alongside the Pine Tab 2, but more on that later because I'm not 100% sure and it's too late for me to message Lucas to clarify because I'm recording this at 2 a.m. Anyways, thanks to all the people who helped out with this update, including Lucas, Counterpillow, and Maximilian Wiegand. Sorry, I'm butchering that. And check out the full version of this update, as this video is just going to summarize it. Earlier in March, we held the fifth community Q&A session, which was the best to date. Since we kept running out of time and many questions remain unanswered, future Q&A sessions may get extended to two hours. We currently don't have a film date for the next Q&A, but it will likely be held some point at June. If you missed this quarterly Q&A, then it is available on YouTube, PeerTube, and Odyssey. The Pine Store and community website have been targeted by DDoS and hacking attempts this past month, which resulted in the sites being pushed into maintenance modes at times. Wiki and the forum were also affected, causing sluggish response times and server timeouts, and many users experienced problems accessing community services. Things should be back to normal now, however, and you can rest assured that steps have been taken to cold the DDoS attack and that no data has been compromised. The new Pine64 community website is in the works since December and is nearing completion. This is much more than a simple redesign, in fact it takes this website in a completely different direction. The goal is to make the site a hub that ties together all the existing community services while simultaneously exposing key community driven elements of the project. The page is also much cleaner and significantly more lightweight. We are planning on initially launching the site for testing alongside the current webpage. For those of you willing to help us test the website, it will be available under beta.pine64.org on April 15th or shortly thereafter. Lastly, Pine64EU will be restocking the PineSoul V2 on April 1st instead of the planned March 31st. However, subsequent Pine64 V2 restocks in April will land on Fridays, with the first scheduled for April 8th. I also want to let you know that due to the upcoming Easter holidays, there won't be any shipping from Pine64EU between April 6th and April 13th. For everyone waiting for the Star 64, I come bearing great news. The SBC will be available for purchase on April 4th. Due to some last minute logistics issues, we failed to make the March launch date announced, but the boards now have been delivered and are getting packaged and ready for dispatch. The board will be available in two RAM configurations with 4GB and 8GB of LPDDR4 or $69.99 and $89.99 respectively. On the other hand, we've seen a large uptake in the Quartz 64 recently, the Model A in particular. This rapid uptake has caused the board to go out of stock temporarily, but production of the new production run is already underway, and we expect the new batch to be delivered soon. In fact, it may or may not already be available at the time this community update goes live. User Not Kumi in the Matrix has been working on some incredibly cool looking bat cases for the Pine Phone. While there have already been many community designed replacement 3D cases made, this one stands out as the absolute best, not in the least because they are transparent and contain an embedded tux. Not Kumi is currently traveling and has not had the time to complete the design and upload the STL files, but hopefully we'll get a chance to print our own version of the bat cases soon. Staying on the subject of the Pine Phone and 3D printed cases for a moment, user YakDev has created a 3D printed Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra adapter back cover for the Pine Phone. This allows you to use S20 Ultra accessories with your Pine Phone or Pine Phone Pro. Most notably, you can use the S20's battery case, which adds a whopping 7,500 milliamp hours to your Pine Phone. For those who are interested in this case adapter, it is available on the Tuniverse website. Since there is no Pine Phone section in this month's update, let's quickly highlight some other developments for the smartphones. First, Stash Penguin has showcased the Pine Phone running Plasma Mobile with QT6, which according to them may be the first instance of the software running on real hardware. This is obviously important news in light of KDE gearing up to launch its next release with QT6 only. Second piece of Pine Phone news relates to Lup's efforts to emulate the Unicorn emulator. His lengthy blog post on the subject provides a complete walkthrough of the process and includes very detailed information about getting started. Is worth a read for those interested in Rust development on the Pine Phone. Reddit user Deli Punch shared a cool Pinebook Pro mod which replaced the default passive cooling solution with the Peltier module. For those who don't know, the effect achieves cooling by running current through a thermal couple rather than by the traditional means of moving air or through liquid. Prior to this mod with core maxed out, the Pinebook Pro would throttle at 75 degrees Celsius, while now it doesn't. This is a very cool mod. Salvador Labana has showcased a number of popular retro PC games running well on the Pinebook Pro using Box x86. 
Some of the games showcased include Miami Heat, Raptor Call of Shadows, and Legendary Unreal Tournament 99. It is impressive how far the open source Pinefrost driver has gotten us since the initial launch of the Pinebook Pro in 2020. Lastly, Clipper and Fluid, a popular 3D printing firmware, has been shown to run on the original Pine A64. The Reddit user Jedi Call 2 has written up a very comprehensive instruction guide on how to get the software running. While the instructions pertain to the Pine A64 in particular, there is no indication that they wouldn't also work on other Pine 64 SBCs, such as the Court 64. Pine Tab 2 will be launching on April 11th and is set to ship with a build of Danknix's Arch Linux for ARM with KDE Plasma as its desktop. Arch is what Pine 64 demoed at Fostum earlier this year, and the team felt that it performed rather well for such early state software. The build that will ship with the Pine Tab 2 will be newer than the Fostum demo, which won't include any critical new functionality, but that said, there is still much time between the moment the OS is flashed at the factory and when the Pine Tab 2 lands in consumers' hands. This means that day one updates may be critical to bring updates to this device. Counterpillow, a developer who has been working on the RK3566, which is the heart of the Pine Tab 2, has shared some of his impressions of the hardware for its intended purposes, including watching online videos, browsing the web, reading PDFs, and consuming other media. Counterpillow ran all tests on a build of Libyan, a vanilla Debian build for the RK3566 platform that they are working on. Counterpillow found that the software decoding dealt well enough with H.264 and FFVP9 at both 1080 and 720p, and that 720p content was all around smooth, with speeds exceeding 60 FPS even on AV1 encoding. This is important since the Pine Tab 2 has a 1200 by 800 panel, which is best suited for consuming 720p content. When using Chromium with a few flags enabled, including Wayland support and experimental performance stuff, Counter Pillow found browsing to be quite smooth. Firefox will also work, but it will be a bit slower because it doesn't do GPU rendering on Panfrost and its JavaScript engine isn't as optimized for ARM. However, compared to the Pine Tab 1, this is a night and day difference. Most of these things will be finding its way to other OSs, such as the Danknix Arch build that will ship with the Pine Tab 2. Regardless, it's nice to see that users will have a choice of OSs for the Pine Tab 2 on day one. Speaking of the Pine Tab, Pine Tab V has been announced, or at least I think so. I don't really know what to make of this one because uh, I'm not really sure if Lucas just announced a Risk 5 version of the Pine Tab, or if this is an April Fool's joke, or if he or I have lost my mind while writing this update. So just go and read the blog post version of this and make up your own mind. It does appear to me though that the Pine Tab V might be a real thing and may or may not launch alongside the Pine Tab 2 on April 11th. Pine Note development has finally reached a reasonably mature stage, and there are even two sets of very promising and user-friendly operating systems being designed for it. Moreover, some of the biggest problems have now been tackled, which means that it is now possible for end users to flash an OS of their choice on the Pine Note relatively pain-free. Power button and even the touch input can now be used to control the U-boot menu, and the menu even includes pre-rendered images for each boot entry. Importantly, this U-boot version now has working e-paper support and doesn't require Android partitions or DTB. Thanks to work by Dideric, there is now a working Linux 6.2 branch for the Pine Note and an OS option available that ships the above-mentioned U-boot as well as a highly refined build of Debian with GNOME. This highly tailored build includes many modifications to the GNOME desktop so that it looks and performs well on a grayscale screen, uses Obsidian themes by user Michi Moly, Remove shadows and animations and adds grayscale icons, as well as improves the performance of GTK 3 and 4 on the Pine Note. However, this is not the only desktop option. There are some configurations to use Sway on the Pine Note. It is also worth mentioning that a post market OS build has been made for the Pine Note, and the ePaper panel, which is a Pine Note selling point, is now well supported on Linux. And I'm not only talking about browsing and reading content, but also about pen input. Developer going by the handle Hurdle has been continuously working on improving the drawing performance of Shernal++, and the dev shared a video of the pen's input performance. While the pen's input latency is certainly not perfect, it is impressively fast, especially if you consider that six months ago it was completely laggy. With the development of Pine Note rapidly progressing and a viable OS image being available on the horizon, the Pine64 team will talk about the future of this project in the coming weeks. Perhaps we'll get to see a beta edition of the Pine Note in the not-too-distant future. Anyways, that's the update and have a great rest of your month.